Hello and a very warm welcome back to the channel. Of course, all the dominoes that are falling into, into place in the driver transfer market means that Renault uh, are now the next team who have to act. Obviously, Daniel Ricciardo moving on to McLaren, filling the void left by Carlos Sainz, who will now be moving to Ferrari. The question is, who do Renault bring in to partner Esteban Ocon for 2021? Do they go with youth or do they go with the resurgent rumours of Fernando Alonso? Sam, I'll, I'll kick off with you on this one. Who do you think should get it and who do you think will? Well, if you're a fan of Fernando Alonso, then you're definitely a fan of this podcast, video, whatever one we're doing. Hit subscribe, hit like, stick around. We've got surprise guest Karun Chandok. He'll be on the podcast next week as well. So you won't be around for that. It gets exciting. But we're talking Renault. Fernando Alonso versus other options. I mean... There's quite a few options, surprisingly, isn't there, for the Renault seat? That's what surprises me, is how many drivers are realistically available for a team the size of Renault. World champions, of course, not for a while, but Fernando was the man to do so. Do I think that Fernando should go back into that seat? No. Would I like to see Fernando back in that seat? No. But it's a bit of me really wanting just to see how much drama and craziness would be created if he was in that seat. Obviously. It's Fernando Alonso in Formula 1. Like... No, I don't want to see him do it again, but at the same time, I really want to see him do it again. And I think we kind of all feel that way. It's just spicy, spicy drama, isn't it, with Fernando? And he's, there's no denying it. He's got incredible team management. You know, he's always got along well with the previous teams that he's worked with. That's sarcasm for anyone that doesn't <laughs> nice, understand it. Nice, nice. <laughs> <laughs> there are some people out there, folks, okay? Um, but he does have incredible skill behind the wheel of a car. I mean, he's gone off to win Le Mans. You know, he, he's done the WEC. Uh, he's done really well over in America. He's obviously a world champion. <laughs> it's not that funny. Say the word, done the WEC. Done the WEC. Oh, man. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, he's done the WEC. He's, he's done well in America. He's not one Indy. You know, that's his final triple crown achievement. And he's, what, <laughs> but Indy. I say all of the right things. Um, and, of course, he's got incredible skill. And he'd be a good mentor for Ocon. He can allow the team to, to develop. He could, he could take that team forward. And they love him as it is there. They really love him due to that historic element. But do I think he's the right fit? No. And I think realistically, Renault have been screwed over one too many times now in the last couple of years. They've almost played themselves here. They've thrown away drivers so quickly that now they've got a good driver in their midst. So he's turned around and left immediately. Obviously, Danny Rick has gone to McLaren. So I think they need to look somewhere where loyalty may ensue. And to me, that is youth. That is someone that maybe you could look at. And unfortunately, they lost Jack Aitken recently. He's now gone to Williams. He's now their reserve driver. And realistically, he'd be a good fit. But the driver that I think should, if he gets enough points on his super license, going to that car in 2021, is Zhao. Am I saying that correctly? I don't know. I don't speak any form of language that remotely replicates how well that should be said. But I think he should go into that car. I think he's done a really good job in his junior career. He had a really good season last time out in F2. He showed that he can be competitive. He's got a lot of pace to him. And that final half of the season, he really came true. So I think that if they're going to want loyalty, which they need, pace, which they definitely could get, maybe some good sponsorship money. I know Renault obviously are a manufacturer, one of the biggest in the world, but there's nothing wrong with a little bit of some moolah, which they've definitely lost over the last couple of years due to driver changes. I think he is, the, he is the direct option that they should be going for. And I think he could be with them for some time if they can keep improving that car slowly. And him and Ocon could make a good partnership. No real rivalry there, no issues. We know that Ocon can get a bit hot under the collar. The same with Alonso. So I don't think there'll be friction there either. So for me, that is the option. You go for that youth choice. Alonso, thank you, but no thank you. Not right now. Hulkenberg, we'd love to see it, but it'll be a one-year thing. So what's really the point? Uh, and Vettel. I can't see Vettel going to Renault. So for me, the youth option is the viable option. All right, you favour experience for Sam. What about you, Harry? Um, you made the point about Aiken. I've kind of forgot about him. He must be kicking himself. He literally just left that junior programme, probably thinking there's no seats going to appear there for a while, and then one does literally a couple of months later. Um, not to yeah. say they would actually pick him, but still, that's going to sting a little bit. Um, so, you know I'm a Fernando Alonso fanboy. Uh I obviously want to see him in that car. As Sam alluded to, the spice will be mega. Um, <laughs> whether it would actually happen and whether it's a viable option is a different problem. You've got to think as uh, the Renault have, you know, spent a lot of money on Ricardo. You know, this was sort of their 
their their big move into the big leagues of F1 again by spending a lot of money on on a good driver and look how well it's gone he's he's already packed his bags after just one year so um do they want to take that risk again realistically look we know how good Alonso is in a car and he would be dragging it as fast as he could around any racetrack but is he going to come back and go and drive around the midfield again is that what he wants I, I don't think so so um yeah, I don't think it's viable, although I've seen many, many reports saying he's got some sort of contract in, in place. But, um, yeah, that could just all be rubbish. Investing in youth is a sens sensible option. Um, maybe Renner needs to take a look and think, well, spending a lot of money on a driver didn't work last time. Let's not spend as much and just work on our car first. Um, so, yeah, it's a tricky one. I don't know how much I rate Zhao. Is it Zhao or Zhu? It's got a jus. It's got like a raspberry jus that you get on like a dessert on Master Chef. It's like I thought it was it? my new show. Just to <laughs> oh, it's Joe. I, it, I don't. Folks, in the comments. How do you pronounce his name? Okay, fine. Let's go with Joe because Ben's probably right. Um, yeah, I don't know how much I rate Joe, um, but if they've got a rookie in the team, Ockham, we know is a solid driver already. So um, yeah, it's probably the sensible option. But for the spice factor. Get get Fonz in. Come on, Cyril. Come on. Hey, Joe. Let's go. Nice. Wow. That's a very niche advert reference. <laughs> Especially if we do find out that's not pronounced correctly. Anyway, um, first of all, I'm, before I discuss who I think should be the option for Renault going forward, let me just say Ricardo's exit from the team. Renault delivered a masterclass in how not to deal with it. Like, good God, they <laughs> messed it up. Just put it side by side with the press release. Um, I know it was easier for McLaren, obviously, because Ricardo's moving into the seat as Sainz is leaving. Uh, but the way in which they dealt with Sainz leaving the team, going to Ferrari, it was so magnanimous and it was just so... They just dealt with it so much better. Um, and there was clearly respect from both sides. And that was absolutely not the case with Renault. Um, it just... It was some very rich comments um, from Cyril, some, uh, just some real backstabbing stuff, which isn't necessary. And, and when they're looking at someone to come in to replace Ricardo and fill that void, why are they why are they going ahead with this strategy of alienating the guy that's just left? It, it just it's not going to entice someone to go there. So I first of all, I just thought that was really poor from the team. Um, I mean, discussing the youth options, Guan Yu Zhou. I, I'm a little unconvinced by him at the moment. That's not to say I don't think that it's an option, um, but there are a few question marks for me. He did have a very good Formula 2 campaign, you know, seventh place in his first year in F2. Um, it, it was impressive. He, he was the best rookie, I, I, I say that. Antoine Hubert, who knows? I, I think he might well have picked it up, but we, we don't know. And his name is might well, would probably have been one we were discussing at this point um, if, if events had transpired differently but um Guan Yu Zhou um he had a good year he had a good year um and I if he builds on that in 2020 depending on what happens um he stands in good stead my, my issue is further back in his junior career if you look at his record in European Formula 3 he spent three years there um, and never achieved better than eighth place in the championship, which is a bit of a worry. You know, we, we nitpick when it comes to the likes of Schumacher and not being able to win the title at the first attempt. Um, so it's got to apply to all drivers, including Guan Yu Zhou, who, who wasn't able to do that for three years. Um, and you think of the, the caliber of drivers that beat him um, in that third season, his best season. It was the only one he picked up a win in, but he was still beaten that year by. Yuri Vips, Marcus Armstrong, Robert Schwartzman, Dan Tickton, Mick Schumacher, guys who will very likely end up being the core of who he's going to be going up against in the next few years. So that's a worry for me. Um, the other driver they've got that's quite prominent in their driver academy is Christian Lundgaard, who will be completing in F2 this season. Um, I have a bit more faith in him, perhaps. He's won a few championships in Formula 4. Had a pretty good year in Formula 3, considering he was younger than the average driver he was going up against. He's still only 18 years old. Um, I think if he has a good year in F2, he might present himself as an option. And I, I'm leaning towards him rather than Guan Yu Zhou at the moment. Um, 
the, the issue with youth for me is that they will be partnering Esteban Ocon, not someone who's had a great deal of experience in Formula 1 himself. We don't know how his return is going to go. He had two pretty solid years at Force India. Um, but you know, he's spent a year out. Is he going to be as good as he was then? Is it going to take time for him to get back to that level? There are still question marks, and he's not—you know—he's not like a Nico Hulkenberg who has had many, many years in F1. Um, so I'd be concerned about throwing a rookie into that situation. Um, and of course, Alonso has absolutely uh, no shortcomings when it comes to that experience. Um, I think they've lost that. They were given Daniel Ricciardo. Um, I, I don't want to disrespect Daniel Ricciardo, uh, Renault, sorry, but Daniel Ricciardo and the caliber of driver is very rare for someone like that to fall on the lap uh, of someone who isn't at the top of their game, as Renault have not been. You know, Renault haven't been a top team, uh, and they had the opportunity to get Ricciardo. Um, so I think they really do need to replace him with an elite driver. Um, and Alonso is an elite driver. Um, I, I find it hilarious how you've got two sides. You've got one side saying they really want Alonso to return and think that's a controversial opinion. Uh, and you've got people who say that there's no chance they want Alonso to return. And apparently that's also a controversial opinion. Doesn't quite work. Anyway, um, I, I would personally love to see it. And I think it would be in Renault's interests. We did see how he didn't cope very well in the midfield with McLaren. It all depends on Renault's confidence and how much they can convey that confidence to Alonso. Are they going to return to the top of the grid? Are they going to be in competition for podiums? If they believe in their own vision and they can get Alonso to believe in that vision, then something could happen. If they are going to flounder in the midfield, this is going to end up like another McLaren Honda. It's a risk. I think it's a risk worth taking for them. Well, I must admit, I, I, I completely understand your points and agree with them. And the, the thing is, we discussed youth, and I have been quite the advocate for youth in this video. Um, the, the spanner in the works here, of course, is that both the youth drivers we've realistically mentioned, regardless of how many in the raw scheme you think could get into that car, don't necessarily have the points on their super license to step straight into Formula 1 anyway, and therefore need at least half a season of F2, if not longer, to, to get enough points to come into that top table. So theoretically, there needs to be an established driver to fill in at Renault, even if it is just for one season. And that theoretically opens the door for... Fernando Alonso, or Hulkenberg to return, or Sebastian Vettel if he somehow wants that midfield challenge. I can't see it happening, but it's an option. Um, there's also a hell of a lot of strong drivers sat in the reserves list. You know, uh, Verline, he might want to break ties from that, but saying his partnership that he's got. Or is he going to Ferrari, Ferrari reserve Ferrari driver? Partnership. It's Ferrari, yeah. And he's not going to get a drive there anytime soon. So maybe that's his ticket back into, into Formula 1. Realistically... Those F2 drivers can't take the step up for at least another 12 months, with, if, especially longer if we haven't got any racing coming. So Alonso, Vettel and Hulkenberg maybe are the three favourites to get into that seat due to circumstance. What about Fisichella? <laughs> no. He's too busy defending uh, fresh air, mate. The Casio triangle <laughs> will remain undefended for another year. Um, <laughs> Harry, I just on Hulkenberg actually. I mean, Hulkenberg did fairly well against Ricardo in 2019. Ricardo won. It, it wasn't by a huge margin. Um, I, I'm thinking they could do a lot worse than Nico Hulkenberg. What, what are your views on Hulkenberg, Harry? Yeah, I would absolutely get Hulky B back in the seat. Um, I have a feeling he's absolutely done with F1 though. If you go and look at his Instagram, he's just living his best life. Like he doesn't <laughs> care. Um, I, yeah, I don't see. I could ironically see Renault approaching him and him potentially saying no. Could you um, imagine? Oh, I mean, so I, he's that kind of guy though, isn't he? He's a bit of a joker, and I reckon he would take a lot of satisfaction from saying no. Could you imagine, like Renault? ditching you know at the very beginning like ditching Palmer and then going on to ditching signs and then ditching Holkenberg and now they find themselves in a situation where their lead driver leaves them and they go back to their other driver they got rid of and he turns them down that is a turnaround in fortunes what about, J what about JP what about Palmer back in the seat Palmer for <laughs> Renault we're going to kick start that campaign <laughs> Oh, the llama boy is back. We Jonathan, obviously. Palmer the llama getting back on the grid. <laughs> well, I mean, Palmer llama, which really goes back into the LB archives. I can't think of a better way to, to finish off the video. So to round it up, Sam, please get us out of here. If you'd like to see more about Johnny and Palmer the llama, then you definitely need to hit subscribe. And of course, to let more people know that Palmer is in fact 
Alama, hit the like button because it helps share that video, it gets into recommended and it really helps to grow the channel. It's amazing how much hitting like actually helps more than you think. So please consider it if you have enjoyed the content. Thanks for sticking around. In the meantime, I've been Samuel Sage. I've been Ben Hocking. And I've been Harry Eat. And remember, keep breaking late.